ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930 present The Drive. So how are we holding up? I haven't checked in with you in a couple of days. How are we holding up? Welcome into The Drive. It's ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. How are we doing today? The Thundering Herd exiting the Sunbelt Conference Tournament on Saturday. And since then, we've got the final. It is set coming up tonight. Earlier in the tournament, we had high hopes for the Thundering Herd, and then Texas State came along and smashed that. So semifinal Sunday for the Sun Belt saw South Alabama, one of the hottest teams in the Sun Belt, beat the four seed. So the eight seed beat the four seed 75 to 66. And so South Alabama advances and will take on tonight Louisiana. Louisiana, the two seed, beat. It was a very competitive game. I don't know how many of you could actually watch it. I did. It was, if Texas State maybe, I think, just ran out of gas. I don't know. But very competitive game. Louisiana won it 64-58. So Texas State's out. Where they go, I don't know. So the final set, 7 o'clock tonight, Louisiana versus South Alabama for the Sun Belt Conference title. And if you're looking for, if you're looking for reasoning to see if the herd can make the NIT, I don't know who to tell you to root for here. I don't know where you, because South Alabama's hot. Louisiana, more than likely... You know, again, I don't know. I I don't want to get into that prediction game. But Louisiana, I would think, would be the odds-on favorite to win. But South Alabama, as I mentioned, probably the hottest team coming right now. Talking to some of you yesterday, I think a lot of you think that Louisiana is going to win. And uh, we're going to open up the text line here in just a minute. 304-396-TALK. 304-396-8255. What is going to happen for the Thundering Herd? Now, you saw on Twitter, and if you didn't, I'll I'll, I'll recap it for you briefly. Christian Spears, I don't want to say he was lobbying for the NIT, but Christian Spears was, of course, very very forward-thinking, very positive, and basically shouted out that, hey, look, if the NIT would pick us, uh, we're going to have a great, great hungry fan base uh, excited to see more Herd basketball. Positive stuff. Now, is that really going to happen? Are we going to see the herd make the NIT? And I still say no, because looking at it as it stands, looking at where Marshall has wins and losses, we broke this down the other day, and I'll do it again. It's changed a little bit. Quadrant two, Marshall doesn't have any quadrant one games whatsoever, none. No game is a quadrant one game. Marshall's two and two in quadrant two. I mean, that's pretty good. Duquesne was a quadrant two win. UNC Greensboro was a quadrant two loss. Louisiana, quadrant two loss. And James Madison was a quadrant two win. Two and two. Quadrant three, it's now eight and five because Texas State went from a quadrant four loss the other night to a quadrant three loss. And again, these things get reshuffled. It's not static. It continually moves. Quadrant three, Marshall's eight and five. And then quadrant four, quadrant four, this is this is the bottom, 13 and one. So the good news is you get a loss taken out of quadrant four. Four. It's into quadrant three now. That's, that's good. We'll take that. We will take that. But Marshall doesn't have any signature wins at quadrant one. Quadrant two, a couple of games in conference, a couple of losses, one out of conference, one in conference. And then everything else is quadrant three and quadrant four. Now, you know, is the NIT going to look at that? Maybe. But here's the problem. As these tournaments continue and March Madness happens, already a spot has been taken in the NIT, and that's by Southern Miss because Southern Miss got eliminated from the Sun Belt Conference Tournament. So now spots are starting to fill up. You've got the automatic qualifiers. These are the regular season conference champions that did not win postseason berths in those teams' conference tournaments. So now here we are. These things are going to fill up quick. What's left? Well, we're going to talk about that. What's left for the Thundering Herd? And should Marshall accept a bid to the CBI or the Basketball Classic Invitational? 
We're going to talk about that. 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. We're also going to look ahead to what's happening tonight in the Sun Belt with Louisiana and South Alabama. Earlier today in the women's side, number one seed James Madison defeated number two seed Texas State 81-51. So James Madison wins the regular season crown and the tournament title and will advance to the NCAA tournament. So James Madison getting into the NCAA tournament on the women's side. I think Tony Kemper squad, I don't think there's any opportunities out there for Marshall's team on the women's side. I think their squad's done, unless something comes up. I know there seems to be a few more opportunities out there for the women compared to the men, but I think I think Marshall is done for the season. We'll keep an eye on that as well. We'll find out fully when Marshall, you know, if Marshall gets an NIT bid, we'll find out. If not, I don't think the herd's going anywhere. But that's the question. Should Marshall accept a bid to the CBI or the Basketball Classic Invitational? And again, that number is 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. We've got a lot of basketball to watch this week. Who's your backup team? I got that text from, um, from Mark from Crown City. Who's your backup team? I, I don't have a backup team. SEC tournament, though, my guy Bill Cornwell's backup team, Kentucky, opens play on Friday at 9 p.m. We're going to have that on our sister station, Cat Sports 93.3 and 1340. We should have that game. Um, we're going to be carrying some of the action from the Kentucky Sweet 16 on the girls' side. Ashland made it in, so we've got those games as well. So we will carry girls high school basketball action as far as the uh, Ashland girls go on a sister our sister station, Cat Sports 93.3 and 1340. Big Ten tournaments coming up this week. Ohio State's going to face off against Wisconsin. That's going to be Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. You've got the Big 12 tournament. West Virginia versus Texas Tech. That's going to be Wednesday at 7 o'clock. And then the Mid-American Conference tournament. Ohio taking on Ball State Thursday at 1.30 p.m. I was talking to Rob Cornelius over the weekend, the color analyst for the Ohio Bobcats, the radio network, and they're heading up tomorrow. And we're going to try to get him on later this week, talk a little bit about the Bobcats. So there are the there are your backup teams. You're looking for a backup team? There you go. So that should answer the question from Mark uh, from Crown City. We appreciate Mark texting in. Also from the text line, Highly doubtful that Marshall will make NIT. Very disappointing end to the season with not even being able to win one game in the Sun Belt Conference Tournament. They quit playing aggressive at the end of the Texas game and tried to slow it down, which is not Marshall basketball. I'll go part ways with you. I think Texas State, very good at dictating pace. That was a strength of theirs. I thought Texas State was good dictating pace the last time these two teams met and was very good dictating pace this time. Marshall's got to play Marshall basketball. I think Marshall needs a big. Marshall needs the ability to be able to play fast and play big. I know you can't have it all, but I think you can play fast, and I think you can play big when you need to because we've seen teams bully the herd over the season. Marshall's got to big up a little bit. And let's not forget, again, congratulations to Tavion Kinsey surpassing the mark set by John Elmore. So Tavion's now the all-time leading scorer in Marshall basketball history. So congratulations to him. Our text line, again, is 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. If you're online right now, go to Twitter. Go to Twitter right now. I made a post earlier. I want you to see that because we have got the most adorable, adorable shelter pet in studio with us. We've got Hannah with us from the Huntington Cabo Wayne Animal Shelter. And this week I've got in the studio Scout. Scout, Scout. is beautiful. Tell me he a little bit is. more about Scout. Sure. So Scout is a gorgeous, really uniquely collared dog. He's about a year and a half old. Um, he's very gentle. He's a gentle dog that has good leash manners. He rides well in a car. We've taken him on several adventures now, and he seems to really enjoy that and exploring new places. Scout knows a few commands and takes treats pretty easy. He knows sit, he'll stay, and he loves belly rubs. How old is Scout? Scout is about a year and a half old. 
So he's still a young guy. Skell is available now for adoption. He is. He's at the Huntington Cowboy Wayne Animal Shelter. You can come visit him Monday through Saturday, 11 to 3. Um, you can come and check him out, take him for a walk, take him on an adventure, see if he seems to fit your lifestyle. We really encourage that. Um, and if Scout's not the perfect fit, we have many shelter staff that can match you up with one that does work for you for a dog day out. So what is the process for those of you who don't understand? Sure. When you come to adopt a dog, mm-hmm. it's been almost 20 years since I've adopted. Yeah. And, and I still have my dog, thankfully. Oh, awesome. So he's he's uh, he's 19. So oh my goodness. I showed up at the, uh, the at the shelter one day, fell in love, and, and he was in my lap that afternoon. Uh, What's the process like now? Is it the same? Is it similar? Sure. So what you would do today is you would come in, um, you would meet the dogs that you like, have interest in, and then you would fill out an application. And the application just asks pretty simple questions like, what is your living situation? Do you have a fenced-in yard? Is it a high-energy dog that's going to need a lot of time to run? Um, do you live in an apartment? and a smaller dog to be a cozy couch puppy with you. Um, Just simple questions like that, but it just makes sure that the fit is best for both, for both you and the pet. And how long does that process take? It's not very long. You could do it the same day, probably. So fill out the application if yep. everything checks out. and you, you Take think, the doggy home. Take the doggy home. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so if anyone wants to see Scout, I'm going to have photos of Scout on my social media feed. And that's Perfect. at Paul Swan on Twitter. So you can go see Scout. And if you want to take a closer look at Scout, all you have to do is head down to the shelter yep. and meet Scout. Yeah, please and, come down, visit, volunteer, walk a dog. And if I don't get there first, you can visit with Scout because uh, <laughs> that's every week. You come in every week and yep. and I want to take them all home. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I can't, but I want to take them all home. So yep. if somebody would like to meet Scout, uh, Scout is uh, in the studio right now with us and he well behaved and uh, loves treats. He does. And uh, is already, uh, you know, giving me a lot of love. Very affectionate. He is a very affectionate dog. So if you are looking for a companion to to go out, walk with, have someone watch the game with, yep. just have a good boy. And he turned uh, he, his head. He, he knows that. Scout turned his head as I said, he good said, boy. I am a good boy. Scout, are you a good boy? Scout. Said, I am. Scout's available now at the Huntington Cabal Wayne Animal Shelter. And for more information, uh, you can visit him on Facebook yep. or just come down to the shelter. See who's, uh, who's there you want to bring home. That's right. Hannah, thanks for doing it. We'll Thank do it again you. soon. Yep. Thanks so much. We'll have more coming up on this edition of The Drive, ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. All right, it's time to get into it. Should Marshall accept a bid to the CBI or the Basketball Classic Invitational? I'm your host, Paul Swan. This is The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Now, our text line is 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. So here we go. Let's talk about should Marshall accept a bid to the CBI or the Basketball Classic Invitational? I'm going to say no. And I've got a couple of things that stand out to me. I'm going to say no. First of all, the then CIT, it's now the Basketball Classic Invitational. The then CIT went from Fox College Sports. This this tournament was on Fox College Sports. Okay, You're getting a little bit more of a national platform for this. All right. Not the greatest, but you're getting some national exposure. Some. It goes from Fox College Sports to CBS Sports Network. And then, you know how Herd fans had to watch the game the last year? Now, granted, it was my guy Jay Griffith and Bob Olin calling the game, but it was on Watch CIT. It wasn't on ESPN Plus. It wasn't on CBS Sports Network. It wasn't on Fox College Sports. It was Watch CIT. So the only people that know, the only people that know that Marshall won the then CIT are probably Marshall fans. And the people will look up and see the banner. Hey, what's that? Well, Marshall won the CIT. Oh, okay. That's it. And this is one of those situations where, look, Spring break's coming up. I mean, what what are we playing for here? Championship in the in a in a invitational is that really going to be meaningful? I mean, anytime you win something, that's cool. But is this meaningful? Are you really playing for something, or are you just playing and you get a trophy at the end? And now we're talking about the CBI. Should Marshall accept a bid to the CBI? No, but if the herd does. 
The CBI is going to be held at Daytona Beach from March 18th to the 22nd. It's going to be on Flow Hoops and ESPN2. So, okay, as far as exposure, Flow Hoops, unless you're actively going to Flow Hoops, I don't know too many people. And This is anecdotal. I don't know too many people are going, hey, Paul, did you catch the game on Flow Hoops? No, I did not. ESPN2, a little bit bit. A little bit different story. Okay. CBI, a little bit better. If I had to choose, he said to me right now, we're going to take one of these, Paul. Which one? All right. Which one costs more? I would ask that question first. Which one costs more? I would take the CBI. A little bit better history. Probably going to be more expensive. And if Marshall goes on a run in the CBI, how much is that really going to cost the Thundering Herd? Or for what return? A CBI championship? Which, does that really mean anything? Now, I'm saying no. Don't take the bid. I will ask you. 304-396-TALK. 304-396-8255. Do you want to see Marshall basketball? Take it one more time to the court play in either the CBI or the CIT. These are the pay-to-play tournaments. Their shtick is teams that are deserving that didn't get invitationals to the NCAA tournament or the NIT can continue and play for a championship and a competitive tournament. That's their shtick. They're offering you an opportunity to play more basketball. So my question is, is it worth it? Now, the CBI is going to be held at Daytona Beach. For some of you, you might say, oh, yeah, that would be great. Put Marshall in this thing, and we'll go to Daytona Beach, and we'll go watch. And you'll get a few hundred herd fans to take that opportunity, I'm sure. wasn't thousands. We didn't see thousands at the tournament on Saturday. We saw several hundred, though. It was a good representation. And you might see a few hundred show up. Okay, this might be a worthwhile trip. Would you, would you get a sellout if you were playing at home? Don't know the opponent, couldn't tell you. And the basketball classic invitational, do you think you would get that? Or, of course, are we all sitting here thinking, oh, Paul, we got a shot at the NIT. Look at the record. I mean, the record's 23-8, and 14-2 and at home. Sure, 9-5 and five on the road. And yeah, we lost that one neutral site game. We lost that quarterfinal game. Our first game in the tournament, we lost that. But, hey, we got a shot at this, right? No. I don't think so. It's an outside shot, very outside shot. Because again, you're 13 and one in quadrant four. You should be 13 and one. You should be 13 and one in quadrant four. And again, the the lone quadrant four loss stands as Louisiana Monroe because guess what? Texas State got upgraded. Texas State got upgraded outside of quadrant four, all the way to 191. See, neutral, it, it, if, you're, if you're ranking, if your net is at a neutral location, if your net is 201 plus, you are quadrant four. If this was a home game, if your net was 161 plus, you're quadrant four team. If you are a road team and you're 241 plus, you are a quadrant four win or loss. So Texas State was right outside of quadrant three. Now it moves to quadrant three because neutral net is 101 to 200. So here it is. Texas State now a quadrant. And are you ready for this? Quadrant three loss. Eight and five. Marshall is now 13 and one in quadrant four. Eight and five in quadrant three. Quadrant two is two and two. And quadrant one, no games. The highest, highest opponent was Louisiana, 90. Louisiana, 90. So if you're looking at your highest win, it was James Madison at 94. So James Madison at 94 is a quadrant two win. And again, that was a road game. So a road game consists of a net of 76 to 100. So at 94, that counts now as a quadrant two game. And you look at the highest quadrant three game. Now, quadrant three, if you're taking on a team that is 76 to 160, that is a quadrant, that is a quadrant three game. Home team of 76 to 160, so home, quadrant three. If the net is 101 to 200, as I mentioned, in neutral locations, that's quadrant three. If the net falls in 136 to 240 and it's an away team, then it falls into quadrant three. Interesting. So where will the herd go? Will the herd go to the NIT or will the herd stay home? And where do you think the herd should go? And would you accept 
a CBI or a basketball classic invitational tournament victory? Would you do it? Honestly, what would you think about it? And give me your reasons why. Don't say yes. I, I just why? Why is that important to you? If Marshall should go to a CBI or a basketball classic game. If not important to you, tell me why. Don't just say, hey, want to see some more basketball. Okay, so you you just want to go see the herd play basketball. Is that your your sole reason? And keep in mind, do the players want to even do this? With the players, I mean, you're not playing for anything substantial. Tavion Kinsey's got his record, right? Let's be let's be honest with each other here. Let's be honest with each other. Why did Marshall go to the CIT? Because John Elmore was on the verge of breaking the record. And with extra games, John Elmore became then the all-time leading scorer at Marshall University. So it was an opportunity, something Marshall hadn't done before. It was an opportunity to play some more basketball to get John his record, which then Tavion Kinsey broke a few years later. So there's no record to go after. That's gone. None of that to look at. Hey, we're going to go watch John. I mean, because that was really part of the excitement. Like, okay, we're going to go watch John Elmore play and and get the record because the record was important. Texture writes in, and I might agree with you to a degree. Texture says, more importantly, Marshall wanted Skip Henderson off the record books. I don't know why you would not acknowledge Skip Henderson. And I've heard it both ways. There are some that acknowledge Skip Henderson And there are some that just have disdain for Skip Henderson. Skip Henderson did some things that set his life down the wrong path. But at the end of the day, Skip Henderson, until until his record was broken, was the all-time leading scorer at Marshall University. And you might agree with his punishment. You might think he got a little too excessively punished for all the things that he did wrong in his life, but you have to acknowledge what he did on the basketball court. That didn't go away. You don't erase that. And I don't know if there was an actual conversation like, how do we get Skip Henderson off the record books? Well, let's get these extra games. I think it was more, hey, John's close. We didn't have the the finish to the season we wanted. Let's get into one of these tournaments. A lot of people would like to come out, see John, break that record. He's one of our all-time greats. He means a lot to the program. Previous year was an NCAA tournament berth. That had not happened in a long time. So let's take these games. John will get his record. He'll be the all-time leading scorer. Maybe we'll get a good crowd, too. We'll get some extra cash out of this. Maybe. Who knows? And then Marshall goes and wins the thing. What's the motivation now? What's the motivation now? Is it to bury John Elmore? No, we got the record. The record's been set. You don't have to flex here on this. You're not, you're not trying to, you're not trying to run away at the record here. Tavion Kinsey's not about running away with the record here. It's is this important to herd fans? Is this important to the fan base? 304-396-TALK is our text line. 304-396-8255. More coming up on this edition of The Drive, ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Our text line is 304-396-TALK. That's 304-396-8255. We've been breaking down a little bit of the numbers, and as, as I mentioned, Marshall got a little bit of a, a number boost, at least the quadrants, because the other day it was 13-2 and two, quadrant four and 8-4 and four in quadrant three, with Texas State moving up, that changed to a quadrant three loss instead of a quadrant four loss. Bracketology. Resumes are fun, aren't they? I mean, once upon a time before we did all this stuff, we would look at the record. Hey, they had a great season, 23 and 8. Well, I mean, yeah, 23 and 8, that's great. 23 and 8 is it's good. You won. You won most of the games you were supposed to win. You won most of them. You won almost every game you were supposed to win in quadrant four, and you won the majority of the games in quadrant three, and you went 50% in quadrant two. You didn't have any quadrant one games to, to talk about, but you had a good season. You had a good season. And unfortunately, it seems to be over now. And I hope so, because I don't want to see Marshall going after tournaments like 
the CBI, the basketball classic. Used to be, if you took the NIT, that was settling. Oh, okay, we got to go to the NIT. That used to be the turn. And then the other tournaments came along, and all of a sudden, you know what? This NIT thing's not bad. It's run well. It has some credibility to it. There's value. I mean, it used to be, it used to be the tournament to go to. And then, of course, the NCAA tournament, yeah, as it grew, it superseded the NIT. The NIT is still around, though, has a lot of prestige to it and a lot of value. NCAA tournament, though, it's the tournament you want to be in now. And if you can't get into that, at least you feel like, okay, the NIT is a good showcase for for Marshall basketball. Now that's not the case. It's if you don't get into the NCAA tournament, hey, this NIT, it's pretty good. But if we didn't get into those, hey, we can build to the future and play in one of these other smaller ones. And did it really help the herd to win the CBI? What are the what are the benefits of winning the CBI other than the banner, the ring, the memories, right? We all get to talk, see John Elmore break that record. What What's the value here? So that's sort of my argument. It's not my complete argument, but I think I'm on the same page with a lot of you. I would say no to the CBI. I would say no to the Basketball Classic Invitational. I would pass on those and look to the future. And the other thing that's been coming up, and I got a lot of this after the game on Saturday, and I don't know what the answer is going to be, but Some of you have asked, hey, do you think Dan's going to retire now? Do you think Dan's done? Some of you have said to me, Dan should go. Others have said, got to keep Dan. Look at the program before Dan got here. And so there's sort of this mixed mindset. Do you keep the guy who loves Marshall basketball? Since he played at Marshall, he's loved Marshall basketball. Means a lot to him. Means yeah, it's home to him. Marshall basketball, it's home for him. Do you do you keep the guy who loves the program and then figure out how to strengthen places where he might not be as adept? Is the transfer portal going to be the savior of Marshall basketball or developing talent, recruiting talent to come to Marshall and then stay at Marshall? Is that going to be the correct path forward for Marshall basketball has has Dan D'Antoni's style of basketball been passed by? Is there a component or two he's needing to to finish it off? What are your I don't want to say your your hot takes on this, but where where does he fall as far as your importance? Is it important that Dan come back? There was a turnaround from last year. Sure, the tournament didn't end well, but there was a moment where Marshall was flirting with winning the regular season crown, and Marshall had just as good of a shot as anyone to win the Sun Belt Conference tournament. Better shot than last year. So are you on that are you on that side of the fence that says, look, we love the guy, but he should retire. He should be he should be done. Or are you of the mindset that those people should shut up? It's good now with Dan D'Antoni. It's going to get better with Dan D'Antoni. He hasn't had too many clunkers of a season. And then are you going to be happy with whatever the result may be? I mean, he is the first coach to get the team into the NCAA tournament since the 80s. Remember that. We've had some exciting players here. C.J. Burks, John Elmore. Don't forget, Tavion Kinsey, Andrew Taylor. So there have been some pretty impressive guys come through for Dan D'Antoni. If Andrew Taylor stays, all the better. Or are you going to be the Marshall fan that says, look, we love him. We really do. But as Bob Pruitt once said, we play for championships. What championship has Marshall played for since winning the CIT? I mean, you can go to the tournament. You can go. But are you are you in the championship game? Are you playing for that conference championship title? Did you win? How many conference titles have have you won? How many tournament titles have you won? So are you going to be that person that says, look, those things are important. What Dan does for Marshall is phenomenal. But is it time to look at ways to move the program forward with him or without him? I think we need to have these conversations because it's not something that's going to get solved on a message board or Twitter. And more importantly, it's going to be a question that's going to be brought up time and time again until we get the answer. Now, if Sunday rolls around and Marshall gets an NIT bid, guess what? This question goes away. We're going to the NIT as fans. We're going to the NIT as members of the media, myself included. We're going to go watch the herd play in the NIT. It's all good. You know, we overreacted. That will be 
that will be basically how we handle this. We overreacted. It's fine. The NIT is is a great consolation. And if the NIT takes two Sun Belt teams, will it be Marshall as the second team? What if Louisiana loses the championship game? Will it be Marshall on the outside looking in as it's going to be Southern Miss and Louisiana going to the NIT? Will the NIT take three Sun Belt teams? Are there spots for three Sun Belt teams? But then if Marshall gets in the NIT, eh, we are all overacting here. If Marshall doesn't and then maybe passes on one of these other opportunities, the next question is going to be, what happens to Dan D'Antoni? Because we spoke to Marshall Athletic Director Christian Spears last year, and he said, you know, I got to give him a year. So is this going to be something that's going to linger? Or is this something that's going to be taken care of quickly? We'll find out. But I don't think we know anything until at least after the NIT bids come out on the chance that Marshall might get in. On the chance. At that point, I think Dan calls his shot. If Marshall makes the NIT, Dan calls his shot. And so he should. Quick timeout. We wrap it up here. ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Our final segment we will do it all over again tomorrow here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Got a lot to get into. We'll know tonight which team is going to the NCAA from the Sun Belt. Will it be Louisiana? Or will it be South Alabama? If it's South Alabama, I think your NIT bids will be Southern Miss with the auto. And if there's a second bid, I think it's going to be Louisiana. If Louisiana goes to the NCAA tournament, then. Will the NIT look at a second Sun Belt team? And if so, would it be South Alabama, which is one of the hotter teams right now going in the Sun Belt? Let me keep that in mind. What's going to happen if the if the Sun Belt sends South Alabama to the NCAA tournament? Are we going to then look at the number one seed going to the NIT of the tournament, the number two seed possibly going to the tournament? And then, of course, will that leave room for the number three and that's Marshall. And don't forget, James Madison's up there as well. James Madison, if you're you're going by net, if you're using net, Marshall might edge James Madison. James Madison at least played two teams in quadrant one, North Carolina and Virginia. Teams one and two in quadrant two, James Madison's nine and three in quadrant three, nine and four in quadrant four, and three non-D1 schools. If you look at Louisiana, again, that might not even be an issue because Louisiana might win the tournament. And so... It would then be Marshall and possibly Southern Miss and maybe a conversation. But right now, Louisiana has played two teams in Quadrant 1. Quadrant 2, 1 and 2. Quadrant 3, 9 and 2. So better there. Quadrant 4, 12 and 1. Oh, bracketology. Isn't it fun? Just to compare, well, which wins better? Which loss is worse? We'll find out. At least tomorrow, which team's going to be in the NCAA tournament from the league? And then we'll start figuring out if it's going to be Marshall joining Southern Miss in the NIT, or are we all just wishing and hoping it to be true? That's going to do it for this edition. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget, find me on Twitter at Paul Swan. Go meet our shelter dog of the week. Go to the Huntington Shelter Adopt today. WRBC Huntington, W227BS Huntington, your flagship home of the Marshall Thundering Herd and The Drive with Paul Swan, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930.